Mm -hmm. I'm resident of Collin for YouTube, and joining me here today is Butch Rosenbaum. How are you, man? I am well. How are you, Joel? I am good. We're here to discuss the Friday the 13th franchise, or the first film primarily. When did you get into the Friday the 13th franchise? Uh, well, uh, like a, I guess like a lot of my contemporaries, it was uh, at the mom and pop video store uh, Friday night. You go pick something out and uh, Halloween, or how, it was Halloween and uh, let's see, I guess Nightmare on Elm Street was out by then. This would have been the mid, late 80s, 86, 87, 88. And uh, Friday 13th always for me was was kind of the on the uh, uh, restricted video list, if you will. Uh, you know, that that was the big one. Um, you know, I, I recently and, and uh, I probably should I probably shouldn't say this on video, but um, I recently introduced my granddaughter to the original Halloween. Which, I mean, as we discussed before, um, thank you. Um, it's not really a bloody film. But right, it's, right. it's, I mean, other than some nudity, it could be shown on network TV with pretty much no cuts, maybe language. And even she was like, really? That, that's it? I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, but Friday the 13th was, was really kind of notorious. And uh, I, I don't think I originally watched them in order. But, uh, yeah, you know, I, I picked one up and I was just, you know, um, I was thinking about this the other day. Uh, by the mid to late 80s, Michael was gone. You know, you'd had Halloween 3, Halloween 4 hadn't come out yet. Right. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street was going on. And don't get me wrong, I enjoyed the Nightmare films, but um, I always liked Jason just because he was cult quiet. You know, he wasn't, you know, Freddy's like, ha, 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 look at me. And Jason was just kind of like, yeah, it was it was so intimidating, and, and I loved it. You know, the 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 strong but silent type, I guess. Here's the thing: you you showed your grandkid the Halloween movie. I've shown my kids all the Halloweens, all the Friday the Thirteenths, all the. <laughs> so. Well. She's only she's about she'll turn fifteen in the first part of next year, so I'm I'm doing it slowly. Um, she's just getting into horror, and I, I'm actually enjoying it because you know this is something that that we have in common, and you know, and I can introduce. It. Okay, because she'll she'll somewhat jokingly, somewhat seriously complain about watching Svengoolie on Saturday night when she stays with us, but it's like I've entered. You know, that's John Carradine. That, that's Lon Chaney Jr. That's Boris Karloff. And then she, one she looked at me and she goes, you've got a skull down there in your room. Is, is that why it's named Boris? I said, yes, it is. <laughs> you, I always tell people, I always tell my friends, you got to corrupt them when they're young. Exactly. So <laughs> the younger, the better. But what did you think of the first Friday the 13th movie? You have Betsy Palmer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, playing Pamela Voorhees. Um, I really think I, I pulled some pulled some goodies out. Nice, nice. Uh, Friday one to me is is such an underrated film. It does it, it is a slasher film. It does kind of get uh, thrown under the the that bush, but what people i don't think realize is it's, it's an effective murder mystery because everybody you know like in this for those that seen the first screen film you know who was the killer on friday the 13th it was jason no it was his mother friday the 13th part one for me it's it's an effective if you don't know who the killer is it's a good it's a good mystery because uh, she's really not the person you suspect. I, and usually I'm pretty good at, you know, you start going, OK, who's the one character that doesn't fit in here? And, you know, nine times out of ten, that's going to be your killer. But, right. it, you know, to me, if you if you take away that knowledge, it's like, ah, it could be her. But I mean, she's not given a big part. She's 
I mean this with no disrespect to uh, Betsy Palmer. She's not a well-known actress. It's not like uh, no. you got Anna, uh, or Anthony Hopkins in, you know. So it all works. I think the one thing I'll say with Betsy Palmer, she really, she's the first real female kill, killer, you know, of the uh, of slasher genre. Mm-hmm. And over time it felt maybe i'm wrong maybe you disagree with me but it feels like betsy's pamela Voorhees has become lost amongst the slasher oh yes. more slasher known villains yes yeah well i mean she got overshadowed because when she dies and right then, you know, then her son comes along and uh but yeah uh, her performance is so underrated and i, I really wished um when they did what I jokingly call Friday the 13th part of live and Jason versus Freddy. Um, I really wish they could have brought her back, which my understanding was they were going to have a cameo for her uh, when Freddy assumes the, the uh, identity of uh, Pamela Voorhees to rise Jason from the grave. I'm like, Oh, that would have been so awesome. Uh, really kind of sad that they didn't get that. But yeah, she's, she's very forgotten and very underappreciated in my opinion. You have, you have, I, I, we have yeah, Kevin Bacon, Bacon in the first <laughs> And here's the thing, too. This Many people have called this a, a ripoff of Halloween. I disagree. I, I don't. When I watched Halloween as a kid and watched Friday the 13th, I'm like, what, what are people talking about? Halloween set in a town. Friday the 13th is set in a forest. <laughs> like, it, it because it is a slasher film, right. yeah. I, I, you know, for for ease of understanding, let's just lump everything together. Um, for me, I would go back to, and I cannot pronounce the Italian title. I think it's seventy two Bay of Blood by um, uh, is it Bava? I think Mario Bava. Um, if you've never seen it, you know, it's probably the first slasher film. Which, if you include Psycho, of course, uh, but right. to me, Psycho, uh, so I'm sorry, Bay of Blood has a lot more to do with Friday the 13th, uh, especially with the uh, the double kill, which is also in Bay of the Blood. Wow. Um, if you've never seen it, I mean, it's not going to change your life now. I, I know I have some idea of how many horror films you've seen, so because uh, we can talk, so I know you've got a good, good cash, if you will. It's not going to change your life, but you can look at it and go, oh, OK. So, yeah, I think I think uh, just because it's a slash film, it gets lumped with Halloween. But, uh, you know, and, you know, Michael doesn't talk much. Fre- uh, Jason doesn't talk much. And of course, Freddie, you can't get him to shut up. Right. So um, there's similarities. Uh, kind of reminds me of, of when I was a kid and I saw the first Star Wars. The, the very first one, which they now call episode four. And I was right. obsessed with it. And my dad's like, well, there's a show on TV. It's just like it. Really? What's it called? Star Trek. Yeah. Well, is Star Trek really like Star Wars? Well, they're no. And yes, they're both kind of science fiction-y, the heroic heroes. And yes and no. So are, are Halloween and Friday similar? Yes and no. Yeah. What did you think of you have the townspeople warning the cook, you know, they're, they're, especially the crazy Ralph. Crazy Ralph. He's, it's got a death curse, but it, and they, they, they say he's crazy. But then when she gets in the truck, the tr- uh, truck with the driver, he's warning her too. It's like, yeah. <laughs> what did you think of that? You know, if people acted reasonably in horror movies, there wouldn't be many horror movies. It's right. kind of like that Geico commercial, you know, uh, they're sitting there and he goes, let's go hide behind the chainsaws. And, and the guy just kind of pulls up his mask like, what? Um, you, you have, okay, the crazy guy tells you, and I love Crazy Ralph. I, I was so disappointed when he got killed um, just for his wackiness and, yeah, they, yeah, like you said, then the truck driver's talking to her. I mean, everybody in the town, they're not unfriendly towards her. Right. Like like in some horror movies where it's like, what are you doing around here, girl? Right. It's more like, oh, you're. what are you doing? 
oh, you're going up there. Um, it's just like, hey, <laughs> turn around, pick up the girl that's going to be eating a banana, sitting by the side of the road, and, and y'all go down to, to, to Florida and have a great summer and, you know, not die. Right, right. Don't, I mean, don't, sure, don't, when don't. you're... When you're a teenager, you're invulnerable, blah, 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 crazy old people, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you know, every, it, it, when you get to like uh, six, which is actually my favorite, Jason Lives. And when they've renamed it, it's uh, Forest Green or Forest Lawn or whatever. And it's like, how many times do you people have to be told whether you believe in Jason or not? These these people go in and they when they come out, they're in bags. How many times does this have to happen before you go, no, honey, we're, we're going on to Illinois. That, that quiet little town, Haddonfield, that we passed by, it's okay except for that one night. Yeah, yeah. We yeah, can, yeah, we can, if we can make it we past make Halloween it. night, we're good. We're yeah. good. You know, as long as we lock the doors, bolt the windows, stay in the house, it's all good. Don't The trick-or-treaters, forget about them. <laughs> <laughs> they don't need, they don't need service, though. But, I, I, I'm sort of with you. Crazy Ralph's kill in two is like disappointing. It feels like from then on they're missing that cut type of character to sort of give that on in this warning because it's not like they don't come back here. You know, I felt yeah. three was three to me was basically Crystal Lake without it, them calling it Crystal Lake. I feel at times, even though they called it Higgins Ho, mm-hmm. I felt like, wait a second here, you're not full of me. <laughs> Well, if you've ever, if you're familiar with this right here, the PlayStation 4 Friday the 13th game. Yep. Uh, there are several maps, one of which is Higgins, Higgins Haven or Higgins, whatever it's called. Yeah, so they, yep. they make that one of the part of the camp. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah it, 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 it loses something when, when Crazy Ralph, plus he's just, I don't know, he's funny. I like him. He, he's not, you know, uh, malevolent. He's not working for the bad guy. He's probably just seen a few things. Uh, maybe his girlfriend was one of the counselors that got killed or something, or his mom. And, you know, he kind of lost it. But for the most part, he's, he's, he's harmless, and he's trying to help you. I guess because you don't have many helpful, harmless characters in horror movies. Yeah. I have a theory about Crazy Ralph. I think he worked up at the campgrounds when Jason drowned. Uh. You know, I think he was sort of, that's why he sort of knows what's going on. Maybe, I'm not saying he knows the killer's Pamela, but he knows what happened up there all those years ago, exactly. Could be, could be. If you take away the semi- mythical character of Elias Voorhees, Jason's father. Yeah. I, I, had, I had somebody, somebody along the years made the joke that Crazy Ralph was actually Jason's father. I've heard that rumor. And, and, and I like it just because it's funny. I, I don't personally agree with it, but it is just kind of funny to, to tie it in that way. It's weird but, because years later, Jason goes to hell. They're going to they're going to use the book of the dead from evil dead to say Jason's mother resurrected Jason. But, and that's another theory I've had, but I, I want to pass thorough by your way. What if now we never see Elias ever. Right. And now that doesn't mean he's not around, but what if Elias was a, a professor and read from the book of the dead offered his body and soul in exchange for his son to come back. Ooh, that could work. That could you know. Work. Um, in one of the many... Let me show these real quick. Okay, this set, sure. The individual sets... Nice. Which, which I made my fake Friday the 13th Part 11 cover for. I like that. And a uh, gift from my wife earlier this year, the Amazing Shout box set. Yeah, and, uh, I, have I don't know if it's in the Shout, but I know it's in um, this version. They they kind of do a 
animated storyboard, whatever you want to call it, where they um, do the scene with Elias that was cut. And uh, somewhere uh, back in back in uh, the local library where I went to high school, they actually had a a, a novelization of part six by author. I believe his name was Simon Hawk. Um, Jason always had this amazing regeneration ability and he didn't talk. And uh, it does a little bit more with Elias. And just like in the scene, in that deleted scene, um, the caretaker is terrified of Elias. Like, oh, Mr. Voorhees, I didn't know you were in town. Uh, I've been taking real good care of your, your son and your, your wife's great. I mean, he's terrified. Yeah. Um, that could act, you know, your, your theory or, you know, I don't know if I necessarily you want to call it your theory. But the theory that Elias used the Necronomicon Ex Mortis to um, make a deal after Jason died. Um, I don't know. That's not bad. I always just kind of figured him. Um, I, honestly, I, I always kind of figured him as a big trucker type, you know, like right. you know, six five, maybe not built like Schwarzenegger, but not too far away from it. <clears throat> And, you know, Pamela, Pamela was just some chick he met on the side. He gave her a ride, you know, then gave her another ride <laughs> and <laughs> dropped her off at the camp. And, but um, the uh, the um, there's a comic book series, Freddy versus Jason versus Ash. I forget who put it out. And, it, of course, you know, you've already got the Necronomicon in Nightmare and Friday. And... Uh, it brings them all together, but there there was something about Jason's uh, family and the Necronomicon, and that Jason's basically like some kind of uber deadite. Right. What did you think of once they reveal that it's in the first movie that it's Pamela is the killer? How shocked were you when you first saw that? I was blown away. I. I uh, I if I had been a little bit older, uh, you know, I was in my teens. I hadn't, you know, you get to that point where it's like, okay, it's about time for you to, you know, for the killer to show up and re- reveal himself. If that person saw the film, oh, it's her. But when it because you know, Kevin Bacon's not a huge guy, but to hold him right. and then force that, I mean, that takes some doing. So I was dead set it was a man. Right. Not thinking that an utterly insane mother, you know, um, so it, it, it was, for me, it was super effective, uh, was not expecting it, and I remember, like, okay, I can't, the first time I was, I'm like, where's Jason, where's Jason, because I, I think I would watched four and maybe five, uh, right. possibly even three, not, not that night, but before, and I'm like, well, where's Jason, where's Jason, and, you know, this was, uh, Really, the only thing you had back then was Fangoria, and and I knew she was in it, but um, there wasn't that much because they, you know, they were always dealing with the new movie. So it, I, I loved it. I thought it was great, and, and it really put a twist on that. It's funny because you don't. They say about a boy drowning throughout the film, but you don't hear his name until Pamela shows up. That's that's sort of. I've heard people say Jason's a presence in the movie, but really he's not because you don't know it's Jason until Pamela says his name. You know, it's a boy, but it could be any boy. Mm-hmm. So when she says Jason, I'm thinking, so wait, it was her son? And y- you can tell once she says that, like, oh shit, this is going to be bad. <laughs> she has round the bend a couple of times. Yes, she does. <laughs> There, uh, there was a thing, uh, thing, uh, an idea, uh, whatever you want to call it, that um, Jason, well, first of all, I, one thing I want to say, talk about him being drowned. A lot of people don't realize you can drown and you don't die. You, you know, you go underwater and you, uh, as a child, I slipped on a rock. My uncle and my father both ran to the lake to get me. Technically, I drowned. But, you know, they got me out, got the water out, and I'm somewhat fine. <laughs> but um, my thought always was, Jason was dragged, you know, went down. Him being, um, I, I believe the nice term now would be mentally challenged. 
maybe he thought mommy didn't want him no more. And uh, I always figured he had to meet some some recluse out there and help him learn uh, how to how to live and go through that. And Jason, and, and that, I guess this kind this is a guy. I don't know my canon, my thoughts, whatever, but it kind of matches up. So he's there at the end when uh, I can't think of her name now. The the final girl when she takes care of Pamela and he's watching it. Yeah. So then he had been, you know, not all there, but then that's when he goes, you know, right. you kill my mommy. And um, the bit about Pamela, you know, when she sneaks in the killer, killer mommy, where her internal Jason, if you will, is telling her, which is another reason I don't understand why people don't get that he's going, kill, 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 mom, mom, mom. He's imitating his mother, killer mommy, killer. Yep. And so I've heard people say that he, he, he maybe he has some kind of influence over her, that his, his dead body. It's like, but he never died. And, right. and in my mind, the reason you can tell he never died is when he drowns, he's a young boy. Yep. He's a Ari, uh, whatever his last name is. And then the next time you see him, he's a you know pretty good sized grown man. Uh, yeah. mo- most of the dead people I don't know continue to grow up. Yeah. Usually you stay about the same size. <laughs> so he he may he may have drowned. He may have went under the water, but he didn't die, obviously. At least in my my thoughts and my going. So No, I'm with you on this, and here's why. I don't think Jason ever drowned. I think they thought he drowned. And it, usually too in a lake, you might generally find a boy's body in a lake you know a river i could see but a lake yeah you you would probably find the body eventually now because it's not like crystal lake is like lake erie or something you know what i'm saying it's not a literal great lake right it's not a literal one of the big great lakes that we all love and know it's just a tiny it's a tiny lake and i think what happened with jason is Sometimes with when you're swimming in water, wild water, like a river or a lake, there are undercurrents. Mm-hmm. But, but sometimes those undercurrents, instead of just holding you under, is they'll pull you under and they'll sort of push you. I've had this happen to me. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't really drowning. I wasn't panicking either. And I had it push me down down ways, and I but I came back up. I think that's what happened with him, sort of, but he landed more towards the shore. I didn't. I was still in the water, but I turned out fine, too, I think. Um, (laughs) If you ask my wife, she might say different. Yeah, yeah, we're not asking wives anything about normal. (laughs) No, 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 because we're all guilty. Uh, (laughs) but, But I think that's, I could see that sort of happening to Jason where he gets pushed sort of down and comes back up somewhere far away where maybe no one saw him because like everything with horror is sort of line of sight in a weird way so if you don't so if everyone doesn't see jason come back up or he just drowned they just assume it because what does everybody do with horror it's an assumption right so it's weird to say that but i think that's sort of because you're right he's when people, when someone dies, they don't age, they don't get older. So the next film, he's an adult. And but in 1980, in that film, in the first film even, he would be an adult. Mm-hmm. He, he wouldn't be still a kid. When he, when the kid jumps out of the lake, that's a dream. Sure. Right, right. Which is still a great scene, but. Oh, yeah. He's, he wouldn't be a kid in 1980. No, he drowned in like, uh, what, 52, 62, I forget. I forget my timeline. I meant to look it up. So, I mean, I want to say it was 57. I could be wrong. But let's say 15 years ago. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. He's not going to be an eight year old kid or, or whatever that you see jump out of the, the lake behind uh, the final girl. But yes, that is a great scene. And it makes it gives you that. <gasps> what did you think of they go from Jason's mother? Friday the 13th, part two, we have the introduction of Sack, Matt, Jason. What were your yeah. thoughts on that? 
Um, I, maybe this is from Fangoria, but I always thought that was inspired by uh, the film The Town That Dreaded Sundown. Yep. I don't know if you've ever seen it, if you're, how familiar yep. you are with it. That is a, I don't know if you've ever seen it, it's an oddly scary movie. Because I remember thinking, this low-budget film, I mean, it's got Marianne from Gilligan's Island. Um, that's a, that is an unnerving film to sit and watch. Um, this, with the sackcloth Jason is, I sometimes, sometimes call him Hasey Jason or Redneck Jason. Because right. he's, he's kind of pitiful in his killing skills. He's not Jason. Um, I personally didn't care for it. I think they were just trying to find their way. Because if you, I mean, he, you notice he, 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 um, the next final girl, he attacks her in, in her memory. She's talking about, it, and she gets away. Right. Uh, you take Jason from like four on, four, you know, the fourth film on, you're not getting away. No. So, um, maybe you can look at it as, as, a. uh, is a squire Jason or knave Jason before he becomes the 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 uh, knight? But uh, the the hockey mask for me that's the thing. It, it is it's so perfect, and I, I'm a minor hockey fan. I, I don't really follow any of the teams, but I don't mind to watch it on TV. Uh, but that mask was. I, mean, I, I live in Tennessee, East Tennessee. We we don't have many hockey teams around here. So that, but that mask is so perfectly emotionless. It, it doesn't reflect. It reflects something we may be familiar with, being hockey. But it's not, you know, it's not human. Especially as, as the films go on, it gets more and more destroyed. It, it's it's kind of the familiar, not familiar, uh, inhumanity, humanity going on. I'm a much bigger fan of the hockey mask. Um, a couple of years ago, our mutual friend Patrick McRae, uh, yep, yep. we did a we used to, we used to be part of this hard movie group, and he's like, "What three Friday the Thirteenth films would you recommend?" Didn't even think four, five, and six. And he said, "Yeah, well, he asked me why." And I said, "Well, three, he gets the hockey mask. To me, he's not Jason until he gets the hockey mask. When people think of Friday the Thirteenth, to me, you th- even though I know it's not Jason in five. But you th- this is what you think of is four, five, and six. You know, the the especially six. Six, uh, God, I love that film. I really do. Um, if you've never watched the commentary on that, I believe his name's Tom McLaughlin. And he talks about it's a harf. It's a it's a it's a monster movie. If you've never have, and this is anybody that watches this this video, put six in, turn your color down and watch it in black and white. It is an amazing film in black and white. So um, for me, it, you got to have the hockey mask. So I, c- I can pass on Hasey Jason. Uh, it, it's like something come together you know, right, with right. that mask. It, he, that he be, he became Jason, even though I guess he already was. What's your? I forgot to ask this. What's your favorite scene in part one? My favorite what? Your favorite scene in part one? Uh, it's. Um, it's going to come down to three potentials, and I'll try to narrow them down as I go on. One's the double impalement, because that's just, oh my God, that was, uh, the other one's Kevin Bacon, the pencil, and uh, kind of a cross between um, when the final girl starts um uh, finding her friends and then Pamela just the whole um, rushing towards the climax because to me I know that's multiple scenes but to me it's all kind of one scene because it's all building to set to that climax right so you know if you've been a little maybe a little bored with the with the murder mystery part you know okay you've had your mashed potatoes here's the meat here's the steak yeah. I, I probably would go with that just because that that also started the first. Wow, I, I want to say six, maybe all six of the first ones. One thing is the killings really started when it started raining. Yeah. I don't know why, but I love that. It's so atmospheric, and, and it starts. You know, when, when, okay, we're, okay, is it raining yet? Okay, no, I can go to the bathroom and I'll be back. <laughs> and and you, um. 
that uh that uh that's just you know that's something about it is is you're she's coming around she's like where is everybody and then she starts finding them and she wishes she had never found them yeah my favorite scene is this girl's in her cabin and you hear this kid saying help me help me and it's it's freaking pamela Voorhees. Mm -hmm. you know what an acting job to be able to do a kid's voice to lure that girl i think that was one of the most terrifying things and i was saying this about our to our mutual friend patrick last night when i was doing a video with him give me that over you know the blood and guts because that's terrifying that's that's terror someone you know here's this moment where you think everything seems per a little normal but you know it's not mm -hmm. and you hear this cry for help and you're like you're screaming don't go don't go because you know something bad's gonna happen and it's not the cliche the it's, I, I like scream don't get me wrong I, I probably reference it too much but you know some of the to me the tropes uh, of these films they they played a little fast and loose with them and, and i don't know i'm kind of insulting about them but don't go the don't don't go in there but like the scene you're talking about you're doing that because it's effective and, right. and you may not know exactly what's going to happen, but a, it's like you said, it's not going to be good, right? But you care enough about this person. It's not like uh, Cloverfield where I couldn't care less if every person in that movie died. They were just so characters at best, right? This is, this is an actual character. You can believe it's a human being. It's one of the reasons I like a lot of, a lot of the horror films. I like, I don't like big names in them. Right. Um, it's To me, it's one of the reasons why the original Dawn of the Dead is so effective. I didn't know any of these people. It right. seemed like four regular people. When it's, uh, I'm going to pick somebody I don't care for. When it's Tom Cruise, I go, oh, look, it's Tom Cruise. I'm watching the film. Yeah. As opposed to being wrapped up in the arms of this filmmaker. It's like, as Stephen King you know, used to say, come around the corner. I got something I want to tell you. <laughs> and I, I'll match you with that one. Another one scene that I think is very effective is, uh, I think his name's Steve. He's wearing the yellow uh, raincoat. Yep. And, and Pamela's got the, the flashlight. And he's like, oh, hey, what are you doing out here? And then just there was no reason. Whoosh, man, she, she, she cuts him. And he's like, and it's just so quick. And it's so brutal. And I, at least I was not, ex I mean, sure, I figured he was going to die. But I just was not expecting that. I'm not worthy. I'm not <laughs> worthy. No, I, I agree with you 1,000% because the one thing I've always taken away from that scene was, here's Steve Christie, the owner of the camp. He's walking up. Now, we know there's a killer by this point. You see this light. He's walking. He goes, who is that at first? Then he goes, oh, it's you. He's not screaming. He's right. not panicking. He trusts that person who's holding that light. And then he goes, what are you doing out in this? He's calm. Yeah. And then he gets killed. And it's like, oh, my God, it's someone he knew. It's that just builds the terror. Yeah. Yeah, it's the, the, it's the familiar. You know, it's one of the reasons. Uh, things like. Um, you know, I've known some women who who had relationships with men that didn't end well, and they're always metaphorically and literally looking over their shoulder because uh, it's someone you know. And you know, I don't want to play on the Adams family joke. I, I'm a psychopath. They look like just everybody else, but yeah, right. This person is a psychopath. You know, Pamela Voorhees is a psychopath, and she looks just like everybody else. Yeah, and yeah. Had, yeah. Though I always did wonder. Did nobody know that was that Jason when he drowned was her kid, or did they just kind of oh that's sad and just forget it? You know, because I would I would think any I, I've known a few people who have lost children, and I, one in particular uh, I was friends with the son with a son, and then the mother and of course the father, uh, she got pregnant and she lost the baby and this is. 
Let's see. I was in ninth grade, so 84, 85. Yeah. And it's not 21. And I remember her at the time we lived next door to the church. And after the funeral, she came into our house and she was sitting there, you know, just bawling her eyes out. And my mom going, why? And my mom's saying, telling she's going, why, Helen? Why? Why, Helen? Why? And here it is 40 years later. And I remember that crystal clear. So it's like, did none of you people remember that Pamela lost a kid or did they just not know? I think I what think... what's crazy is, and here's why I think they forget, Jason's birthday, she's killing on his birthday. Mm -hmm. And his birthday's every Friday the 13th. Well, we don't always have a Friday the 13th with the calendars. Right. So... I think any Friday the 13th that fell was his birthday, not yeah. just one, you yeah. know what I mean? So how much time span between the the first two camp counselors we see killed, how much time spans between that and when the water went bad and when the fires were started and then the 1980 murders? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of time had spanned and no one just knew it was her. Could be, could be. I mean, it's crazy. It interesting, though. You know, you have these little. Okay, well, it could be. That, that's what I call them. It could be. Right. So, what was your favorite scene in Friday the Thirteenth Part Two? Part two. Uh, hmm. Probably the campfire scene when, when the guy. Gets really serious. I'm going to say all the serious. And, you know, um, I, I personally never went to, to summer camp. Um, not because I was scared of Jason. Just not many opportunities around here. Uh, <clears throat> but usually anytime anybody's going to tell you the real story, you know, they're setting up some joke. There's, there's somebody going to come up behind you with a mask on or something. And there's none of that. That, that scene is straight. It's he's you know this is what happened. These these people got killed, and you know there's no no ulterior motive other than okay, kind of okay. We need to talk about this, and it just to me that's in a very effective scene, and it it one it reaffirmed that that the first one happened, and and uh, this is a continuation of that story. So we, you know we saw Pamela's head. We know she's not coming back. Well, right. at least we presume she is. It's somewhat rooted in reality. Um, so what's going on and, and who's doing it? Right. So for me, that really sets the tone and, and, and really starts bringing the, the movie in. And it's OK, we're OK. Well, we've introduced everybody. Everything's good. Now we're getting to the good stuff. My, my, my great uncle lived in Whitwell, Tennessee. And I remember camping near his house and we had just watched Friday the 13th part two. And he come out and he goes, y'all watch out for that Jason out there. And I'm just like, what the hell is wrong? <laughs> <laughs> like we're kids. Like you just y'all watch for that Jason out there. And like, hey, give a shit. Like, hey, if he scared us, okay. <laughs> Even better, you'll go to bed early and he won't have to fool with you. <laughs> you're going to lay in bed quietly going, oh, oh, oh. and he's going to get a good I, night's sleep. <laughs> I, 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 but I shit you not, when he said that, I had my, my little blue blanket and I gripped it for dear life and I just I laid there with my eyes open all night. Like, what? What now? <laughs> but, yeah, see. My favorite scene, I think I'm with you, the campfire scene is terrific. It builds, it reminds me of the scenes from one that has that tension, but then they have it as a joke. Yeah. So it's like, if I had to pick one other scene, I love the scene where the cop's chasing Jason and he sees the shack. I thought that was a really good tense moment. Yeah. And then you have the you have the cheap kill, obviously, but 
other than that, I like it for what it is. It's this tense moment where the cop realizes, oh shit, someone's out here. Yeah. You know? Uh, this isn't, you know, uh, some teenage kids uh, just messing around or <clears throat> I may have known a few teenage boys that, you know, thought they were a little too big for their britches, as my grandmother would say, and wanted to go out and maybe start some stuff and you know, not meaning to hurt anybody, but probably doing things they shouldn't have done. Right. Yeah. He's like, oh, this isn't this isn't bad. This there's something going on here. So part three, Jason gets the hockey mask. Thank part, you, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did you think of this movie here? It's in 3D. Whether even if you watch it in 2D, they sort of it's in 3D in a sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was one I, I really uh, was looking forward to. Uh, this was back in the VHS days, so it was not in 3D. Of course, you know, it was the really, you know, even then you had the really bad. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever seen a 3D movie and, you know, dodged anything. It's like, yeah, okay. Uh, but I thought they used it well, especially the uh, the harpoon. Um. I liked it. It it brings us about if uh, if two in the sackcloth or, or Jason's uh, roaming younger days, this is when he became a man, so to speak, <laughs> a homicidal man. But the the minute that that um, that mask goes on, it's like okay, we're 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 we're, we're in the business now. It's one of the reasons I was really I didn't want to be, but I was so disappointed in the remake. Because <clears throat> they were like, when he gets to find the mask, it's not going to. He's not just going to pick it up and put it on. It, there's going to be meaning to it. And, and I see the remake, and he finds the mask and, and puts it on. I'm like, what? I mean, that's what he did in the first one. But don't tell me it's going to be some big scene and have some big meaning when it's just, yeah. oh, now I'm a killer. <laughs> I think my biggest sort of my favorite part of three is when Jason's looking out at the outside of the barn and they have this sort of over the shoulder quick look it feels so goddamn eerie mm-hmm. like he doesn't have the hockey mask yet I'm with you the hockey mask is the biggest deal in three but that shot that scene it gave me chills like for a slasher for a part three you know, they say after so long, like films lose their s- scare and their luster. But this is the third entry of the Friday the 13th franchise. And you're still giving me chills with an over the shoulder camera view. What was your favorite scene in this? <sighs> um, I, I don't know if I can pick one. Uh, I mean, um, that that's a good one. What the one you just mentioned, um, Shelley, uh, Shelley with the hockey mask and the harpoon. Um, one of the things I did about him, about uh, Shelley, was I don't have you know obviously my last name is Jewish, but I'm not Jewish. But Shelley to me is obviously meant to be Jewish with his curly hair and and everything. And so I, I and he's kind of a nerd and kind of a misfit. I always him I, I i i guess i really identified with him and um almost like it was necessarily sad that he died but it was like <clears throat> you know i i'm at the time when in the teenage years uh the early teenage years i, I wasn't a big guy i didn't, hadn't hit my growth spurt yet uh i was nerdy you know uh, so he was kind of my surrogate so i don't know if it's necessarily my favorite scene but it was like here was someone i could really Identify with that. I wasn't the camp counselor telling the story in part two. I wasn't Steve Christie or Crazy Ralph, but uh, Mitch Shelley was kind of my okay. Okay, here's somebody I can get in. You know, he 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 was kind of the the ancestor of, of uh, the the rules talking guys from Scream. You know, the the obvious horror fan surrogates that that you're supposed to latch on to. Right. What did you think of they they bring Jason with the axe at the end? Now we know he's not dead. 
here's Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Mm -hmm. They call it, which it's not the final chapter. (laughs) But what did you think of this film? Many people consider this perhaps one of the best, if not the best, Friday the 13th movie. I agree. It is one of the best. Um, they, they pulled out all the stops. I think this is the one that Tom Savini came back and, and did the effects for. He's like, I, I brought him in, kind of the Bill Cosby. I brought him into this world. I'm going to take him out. Um, good storyline. Um, probably, <laughs> laugh if you want, but probably my favorite Corey Feldman film. Um, an, another character that, that I, I admitted I was older, but he was interested in. Uh, the uh, the guy that Corey Feldman's sister falls for that try, his sister was in two or three I forget which and he's to come to Crystal Lake to to find Jason and well he finds him yeah uh, it was just you know it was um, it was good it really was um, and the fact that it immediately picks up after three and. Yeah. It's so interesting. Uh, I don't know if you remember when when Jason's in the morgue and the morgue attendant is watching Jazzercise or whatever it is with the chicks in the spandex. Yeah. I forget uh, what relative it was. Maybe my nephew Josh was like, "What is what, what is he watching? Is that porn?" Like, hey, this was something they used to do. I mean, there was videotapes. So I said, "You remember Farrah Fawcett?" And he's like, "Who?" I'm like. So I had to explain who that was. But I said they 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 had videotapes and, and women would watch them and do exercise because there was exercise on TV. There was, of course, I had no idea who Jack Lalane was then. But you know, <clears throat> said, this was this was actually on TV. I remember watching. I remember seeing. Yeah, that's it. Things like that. So it, it's a kind of a inner. That's one of my favorite things about older films. And I know it's not really that. Old. But you see slices of life that, of things that you forgot about from back then. Uh-huh. Like we were watching something recently, me and my wife were, and, and they got glass bottle Cokes. And they reached over and and took the lid off with the, the attachment on the Coke machine. You know, they had little open the door and they pull it out. And I said, look, her, my wife, and I said, our granddaughter, what, you know, you hand her that. And she was like, how do I open this? You know? Just things like that that you kind of forget. So that and and that the, his nurse girlfriend that comes in and they're about to get it on in the morgue. No. Yep. And then Jason's hand falls on her. <clears throat> I think her butt, to be honest with you. And it's this gruesome black hand and everything. And to me, that this is really the, the when my popular conception of Jason. Uh, this is when it really starts. This is when he's going around, you know, we've got the hockey mask, everything's in place. And I, I really like it. I really do. Um, it's not my favorite, as I said. Six is my favorite. Spoiler alert. But um, it, it's a good one. It's one of the best, I agree. This, to me, is the start of the Tommy Jarvis trilogy. Yes, yes. In, in every way. Here's a, here's a new character that's being introduced. And he's he's the first male protagonist who's coming back more than once. He's, you know, he's, he's the only male protagonist, I think, that's been in more than one, if I'm not mistaken. But, and... It's amazing. Three different actors play him, mm-hmm. but I love each adaptation because I don't think anyone strays from yeah. the first, from what Feldman did. I think they stay true to what he was and what that character ultimately became. What's your favorite scene in four? <sighs> um probably when uh it's uh the the one i forget who it is that they're nailed to the door yeah. and, and that uh, whoever starts finding the bodies and she opens up the door and there's that body and you know with those huge like railroad spikes holding it up and uh jason starts chasing her and he comes to that back door and he just rips that body down and it's just yeah. like holy shit I mean, I, that it's it's a, it's a quick scene. Probably doesn't mean as much to other people as it does to me. But it's just kind of like, 
this is somebody I'm not fool around with. Yeah. Like, um, I, I'm friends with a guy named Paul. He's a big Halloween fan. Uh, my brother from another mother, Michael, he's, he was a big uh, uh, Freddy Krueger fan. So, I mean, we all have a friendly rivalry. Uh, uh, you, you got mommy issues. Well, you can't shut up. and He can't talk. But um, Michael, well, maybe until the new trilogy, Michael wouldn't be ripping somebody down like that. He, that's not him. He, he's, he, as I said in your, your, our previous encounter, Michael's a tactical killer. Yeah. Jason is a juggernaut. Yeah. The only way you're getting away from Jason is you get out of Crystal Lake. Yeah. I have two favorite scenes in this. One, the the dancing scene where uh, <laughs> with uh, Crispin Glover. Yes. Oh, what what? Every time I see that, I'm like, are you having a seizure? I have a funny story. He in the behind the scenes, he want he wanted the song to be to ACDC's Back in Black. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. And they said. No, that sounds too fast. Like you can't dance like that. Though. He goes, no, the way certain chords, you good. And they're like, no. So they played the song that they ended up playing. And so, which I think is funny. It's like they wanted to use ACDC in the movie, but they didn't. And my my favorite scene is when the guy that the girl, you know, wants to sleep with the the camper guy who's looking for Jason. They're in the house. They're looking for Jason, and they're, he's down in the basement. And when he's Jason's killing him, even though you know it's happening, it's just like terrifying. And he's screaming, "Get out! Get out!" He's yeah. killing me. It's, I guess, uh, weirdly heroic. Yeah. And you know, he he's he he realizes I can't beat this guy, yeah. but maybe I can save this chick. Uh, you know, this this you know, hey, this person who could have been somebody important in my life, and you know he's trying his best against this juggernaut, and he's like, get out! And, you know, he's doing what he can, and it's like, you know, it, it's kind of like the uh, the mythology of the last stand. You know, I'm going to stand here on the bridge, and I'm going to hold him off as long as I can. You know, yeah, you 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 lose your life, but you do something very heroic, and, and to me, that's that guy. I mean. I, I God, I wish I could think of the character's name, but he, uh, yeah, he, he. That's a really, it, it's brutal, but it's also, it, it comes into that. Uh, this isn't somebody we can beat, right? So, uh, so in a strangely, I guess, strange way of saying, it, it's a very heroic scene. I have a question for you. Do you think? Now we don't see him do this. But do you think Tommy Jarvis found his bo- mother's body? Yes. Yes. I, and I think that's part of what uh, pushed him as far as he did. I do, too. In because, the uh, Friday the 13th game, they have some record, some, some uh, therapy sessions with uh, Tom Matthews doing the voice who plays, jumping ahead a little bit, he plays Tommy in part six. Yeah. Uh, and to find out that his his sister, she's a little messed up for a while. I mean, she got over it, and obviously Tommy couldn't. And she moves away and doesn't have anything to do with him. Yeah. So I always thought that was an interesting uh, addition to the canon without changing anything. But yeah, yeah, he he uh, Tommy finds the hat. I think he has to. And uh, I don't care what he says. The dog got away in my mind. <laughs> Kill the people, spread the dog. Leave the dog. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's one with Kane Hodder where they talk, he was split, Jason was supposed to kill a dog, and he's like, Jason wouldn't kill a dog. And yeah. Like, well, no, no, really, is it? No, Jason wouldn't kill a dog, and he wouldn't do it. And I was like, thank you. Uh, you know, um, one thing I don't, my, my sister, growing up, my sisters, she told me eventually when I got older, she's like, I was always afraid you'd go crazy and kill our parents. And I'm like, they're films. <laughs> I mean, I, I used to really. I guess I still kind of am I, into special effects. Tom Savini, Rick Baker, Dick Miller, all those guys. Um, I knew I learned thanks to Fangoria how they did all that stuff. And even then, you know, we all know it's a movie. You know, uh, 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 Dave Prowse and James Earl Jones are not in a suit of armor with a magic sword. Uh, Christopher right. Reeve, God bless him, he was a hero, but he couldn't really fly. You know. So, 
I, I don't know. So in my mind, it was like I was a little more more aware because right. I knew this wasn't real, and therefore I didn't care. You know. What did you What did you think of Friday the Thirteenth Part Five? I liked it. Uh, I know a lot of people don't, since it's quote not Jason. Um, I did like the, the. I wish they had done a little bit more of the. Jason was compelling him from beyond the grave, which can actually tie back into your Necronomicon theory that um, Jason was reaching, or or Pamela was reaching, or Elias was reaching. Right. Um, and. My favorite, well, it's a couple of scenes. <clears throat> Pam, the uh, blonde uh, that works at the center when uh, that Tommy comes at. Pam, uh, Reggie, the, the, the young African-American boy, and Tom all go into town, get separated. Anyway, Jason's chasing Pam. She's wearing uh, a pink sweater tied over her. And she has a white, white blouse and blue jeans. And she's running. And she's running through the forest. And you see it. And then you see a scene where she's missing the pink sweater. Yeah. Okay, she's running through a forest. See another scene. She's still running, pouring down rain. And then she gets to back to the uh, uh, the th- the house. Guess what? Her pink sweater's back on. <laughs> it was like one of the first editing mistakes I ever caught on my own, and it, it makes me laugh and I enjoy it because it's like. Oh no! Oh, they pulled my sweater off. Well, I gotta keep running. Wait a minute! I'm gonna go in a circle. Okay, now I've got it. Now I'm gonna put it back on. Now let's go back. <laughs> it, but it, here's the, here's something about Friday the Thirteenth that a lot of people don't 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 like me saying that are fans of it. I don't take the Friday the Thirteenth films too seriously. Right. That's another reason the remake failed for me is it tried to be too realistic. Right. I don't mind that she loses. She has a sweater. She loses a sweater. She gets it back, and nothing is ever said because I don't take it serious. You know, right. after after, um, well, actually, I guess six uh, coming up. But um, Jason does run at times, but let's say walks briskly. But you're running. Even if I walk briskly, you're going to get away from me. Mm-hmm. Um, you run, you run, run, then you finally stop. Here's my breath. Look around the tree, always there. Uh, you can't, in my mind, you can't take all that serious. Right. It's it's a it's it's to uh, sh- show up, get some popcorn with your friends, watch some some possibly silly and possibly stupid people die in interesting ways, and how are they going to get rid of him this time? You know, kind of almost like a version of Frankenstein or the Wolfman from the Universal days. We're going to bring him back, and then we got to figure out how to get rid of him. And, and you're not supposed to have some great, okay, well, Jason has blah, 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 so because blah, 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 blah. No, no, just sit back and have fun. Enjoy it. I've never taken these films serious, so that's why I don't mind her losing the sweater. My favorite yeah. scene is near where you're at, right where you're saying, because when they come upon the ambulance and the guy dressed as Jason pops up, Reggie delivers the best scream. Scream! Oh my God! Ever, and I laugh every time. And he does another one when uh, towards the end when Jason's coming at Pam. Yeah. And I think he's on the uh, the, the 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 machine with the uh, rollers. I can't think of what it's called at the moment. But when he hits him with that. And he lets out another one of those screams. It's just like, oh, dude. Oh, God, that hurts my ears. <laughs> but, um, yeah, God bless. And it's got uh, his brother. Yes, brother that we see for a little while that gets killed in the Port of John. Yep. Um, the actor's name is escaping me, but he's in uh, Return of the Living Dead. Yep. And... Uh, which came out right about the same time, which is also has Tom Matthews, which is in the next film. It's kind of like this little roundabout. But yeah, that scream. Oh, God. It's like, that's a noise people, normal humans shouldn't make. <laughs> what did you think of Friday the 13th, part six? I loved it. 
I loved it. It was actually the first one I saw in the theater. Um, I missed seeing five for some reason. Uh, me, uh, the the guy I met, mentioned, Mike, that's the big um, um, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street fan. He, me and him went. Uh, we were big horror fans. Uh, we, he's like the oldest friend I have in the world. We met in third grade. Um, we're having a really good time, you know, laughing, carrying on. Uh, Laugh when we're supposed to laugh, and uh, <clears throat> so many great scenes. Um, and it's just like the very beginning when Tommy goes to the grave and kills Horshack, gets Horshack killed from uh, Welcome Back Cotter. And it's like, Tommy, if you had left it all alone, everything would be okay. I understand this is like some kind of advanced therapy, and you know you've got to tear it down and all that. But if you had left it all alone, <laughs> everything would have been okay. You wouldn't have met your hot future wife, but that's a whole nother scene. <clears throat> but I, I just, I love that film. Again, it's a slice of 80s cheese, but it's, and, and I mean it in a good way. It's uh, it's interesting. Tom Matthews does a great job. Uh, and, and it's an interesting evolution, how they, they try to, uh, um, Crystal Lake has tried to rebrand itself. And move on because Jason's been dead for however many years. Uh, let's, let's say twenty-ish. Looking at Corey Feldman, and looking at Tom Matthews in this film, right? And uh, the so many great scenes, like the, the one guy who smashes him into the tree, and it comes away, and there's a, a smiley face. And every time I see that, all I can think of is "Have a nice day." And, and the the three uh, weekend warriors that he gets with the super machete. Um, the, the, the chick in the RV that he rams so hard against the wall that her face starts making imprint on the other side of the wall. Yeah. Just, I love that film. Uh, I'm always sad when it ends. And really, for me, uh, that's, that's the peak of the yeah. Fridays because we start going down in, 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 uh, in storylines, in, in my opinion, and, and I think they were down to like twelve dollars per film after that, because you know, God bless them, they weren't making Paramount any money because that's why they had made six of them. Right. I never understood that. Thing. Well, this this just made a hundred another hundred million for us. Uh, let's give them two million to go make another film. <laughs> My favorite scene in in six is is when Jason is in the RV and he's approaching the kid. You have Alice Cooper playing, <laughs> and the RV, he kills him, and the RV flips. Alice Cooper, interesting in love, has a tie to each three of the the, the slashers we've mentioned. Uh, yeah. Well, that's uh, that's kind of not true, but hold on. Um, he Alice Cooper it literally play, uh, plays Freddy's, one of Fre Freddy's stepfathers, and for uh, Nine on Elm Street Part 6, I think. Uh, he's a, there's a scene where you, you just you kind of don't even really see him, and he does his belt. I don't, I don't know if your dad ever made that song where he's got the belt coming around and he pulls it and he got leather on leather. Sounds like, Freddy, get in here, boy. Yeah. Um, and and he uh, Alice is in does the the he's back the man behind the mask song, which one of my favorite Alice songs at that time. And I've seen Alice I've seen Alice four times in concert, so that should tell you I'm a pretty big fan of his. I take it back. He doesn't have necessarily have a tie to Michael Myers, but he is in a John Carpenter film in Prince of Darkness, which is yeah. an amazing film. Let me do my Thurston now. Amazing. So to me, you, you don't have Michael Myers without John Carpenter. So there's my connection for anybody that's unhappy about that. They, they just need to put Alice Cooper in Halloween ends and make him just have the tie in for everything. You know, let, let him drive by and go. Hadn't feel no noise. No, we're not stopping here. Get the hell out of here. Yeah, ha have his tour bus be broke down. Fix it. It's almost Halloween. Get the <laughs> either you get this running or I'm walking out of this town. That's what I like that. Yeah. Who I know we're not through all the films yet, but who is your favorite Jason? Um, Kate Hodder. Yeah. Um, he he's the classic now. Um, I want to say it was C.J. Graham and Six. And he did a really good job, I thought. Um, but really, in my mind, until you have Kane, you don't 
nobody really just kind of grabs onto it and, and does anything with the row. It's just some of them were just kind of like, eh, boom, I killed you. Uh-huh. EJ does pretty good in, and uh, there's there's some great moments in uh, six that he does, like when uh, when after Tom after Tommy Jarvis leaves and then Jason sits up and, and puts on the mask and turns and just as the lightning hits and then <clears throat> uh, I saw something not that long ago where he said if they had asked him back he would have loved to come back. Uh, Kane Kane Hodder is a, is a great guy and. and he was a great Jason, but I, not n- not knowing what the future brought, I wouldn't have been upset if they would brought him back. But, it, right. but it's it's Kane. Friday the Thirteenth Part Seven. Is it? Maybe I'm wrong, but to me, this is Jason versus Jean Grey. Um. Yeah. It, uh, Carrie is. is yeah. Is, I always. Um, my understanding was it started out as the first version of Jason versus Freddy, and they couldn't work out the deal, so they rewrote it um, into uh, Tina, yeah. the New Blood. But um, there's some interesting points to it. Uh, her finally, we have somebody that can stand up to him, even though she's not doing it mano a mano. There, there, there's one of them where I, I forget what it is. I think it's a light switch and she brings it down and she she just knocks him and he goes backwards off some steps and it's like wow you know that that's interesting we hadn't seen this like we were just talking about the guy in, in, in uh four you know he couldn't stand up against jason and then here's this chick is a skinny little girl lar park lincoln i will never forget her re- name for some reason lar park lincoln i guess because it's three names and she's not necessarily going toe to toe but She's going up against him and doing some damage. Yeah. Ending she, was very disappointing, I thought, though, when she brings her daddy back to drag him down, saying, okay, I know why you did this, but I don't know. I guess I was just expecting more of an ending. I think they really, this movie, my biggest issue with it, it I'm with you as it's end. It just feels so flat after everything. It feels like they were just trying to top themselves with the effect. And that's, I don't hate this movie, but I, I don't rank it as high as the previous movies, yeah. you know. I give this a six, the rest I give like a nine or a ten. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it, 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 there's a lot of the, um, the films that seemingly had interesting things that could have happened. And um, I... I have often wondered if they actually ever thought about reaching out to Stephen King. Yeah, I know Carrie's quote dead at the end of the film, but hey, how would you like to see hey, I'm seeing Carrie in a Friday the Thirteenth film? I'm sure Stephen King's response would have been something that we probably shouldn't say in in, in a recording. But uh, <clears throat> and uh, it it was interesting, but in, you know you, when you start getting to these films. And God bless them. They were trying as hard as they could. Yeah. Um, but you just to me, it's a case of they were trying, but and, and that's where we're at in the, in the series, in my opinion. I sort of wish I, I get that they went for something different here, but I sort of wish this would have just been Jason Takes Manhattan instead of the next film being Jason Takes Manhattan. Um, which I love, Jason Dixman. <laughs> so, what did you think of Friday the 13th, Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan? It took him like three quarters of the film to get there, which is my, really my biggest complaint. Right. The thing was, it wasn't that bad, though, the, the stuff on the boat. It just, I, I thought that could have done a little, maybe a little bit more of a... Uh, Maybe not a murder mystery, but uh, Ten Little Indian scenario where who's going to get it next? Yeah, you know, since you're apparently saving Manhattan for the last thirty minutes, uh, another film that's interesting premise. They were trying, but yeah, there's some great scenes. Uh, of course, anybody that doesn't know that was filmed in Cal- uh, Canada, I believe Calgary, but don't quote me on that. Uh, but with the scene where he's 
and the camera kind of does a Sam a slow Sam Raimi turn around and, and it comes back up and you see this big uh, hockey mask behind him. Uh, that I, I like that when the gang comes up and they're like, hey, man, and they pull their, you know, throw their knives and he just lifts their mask. I'm like, it's cool, man. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> uh, my friend Paul, that, that's a big Michael Myers fan, he loves the scene where the guy's trying to box with him. And yeah. then he just gets his head literally punched off. Um, once you get over the disappointment of it taking forever to get to Manhattan, it's, it, it's not a bad film. Um I didn't know that they flushed toxic waste through New York sub- sewers at midnight or whatever. That that was if if I didn't like Daddy coming back to save Tina. Wow, the toxic waste, man. <laughs> I, I I think they just painted themselves into a corner. And um, hey, they flushed toxic waste, and, that, and then that turns him into a little boy. What? Just do it. New York City, this literally should have been Jason taking on the city. Like Jason just taking on the cops, the yeah. city. I know that to me that would have been better than down in the sewer. I mean, the suit, the only thing I like them being down there is it gives a creepy feel, but they're not down there long. Right. You know, it, it, if they would have started off when they got off the shore down there somehow. You know, found a way to go down there somehow, like early, and come back out, and then the climax is in the city. I wouldn't have minded it. I think that's sort of where it feels fun. It's like I get why you're down in the sewer. It feels creepy, which I like. Yeah, but you're not down there a whole bunch either. So, and you're not you don't use it as well as you should have. You do use it, right? But uh, of course, the, of course, the reason we don't see you know ten thousand cops versus Jason is they didn't have the money, right? I'm saying it's another reason he's only in Can- he's only in Canada. I mean, New York City, <laughs> you know, thirty minutes. It's like uh, we have like three days to film this, so be quick. It, this ain't escape from New York. This is escape from Canada, son. <laughs> Oh, God. Friday the 13th, part nine. Jason goes to hell. What were your thoughts? Crap. It, it's probably, um, it's it's my number two least favorite, except for the very ending scene with uh, Freddy's glove coming out and grabbing the mask and laughing and going back. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, Paramount had produced the first eight uh, Jason films, Friday the 13th films. And uh, I don't know how New Line acquired it, but with Nine, New Line acquired it. That's how you have Jason there at the end. New Line Studios, a.k.a. the house that Freddie built. Um, wow, I mean, you know, I, I, think, we ta- I think we talked about the, uh, the Halloween, uh, Halloween kills and, and how they were. Uh, I've talked to a few, few friends about it, so if it's not you, I'm sorry talking about the people they brought back the characters they brought back from the first halloween film into halloween kills like uh tommy jarvis and uh, uh Lindsay, the little girl and, and has the trust i bring the actors back uh, i think that if you want to call it stunt casting that's one thing i felt like there was a little bit of stunt casting in um goes to go to hell um with aaron gray from buck rogers and then um John D. LeMay, who was in Friday the 13th, the series. Underrated show, by the way. Yeah. Uh, but this, the whole, I don't know, Jason's an alien or a slug or whatever. It's like, didn't I see this in a movie with Kyle MacLachlan? I mean, yeah. it's like, it's like, okay, we've got this. Who knows the least about Friday the 13th? Okay, you're writing it. <laughs> I think New Line was trying this bold concept with, and Adam Marcus was trying this bold concept with the, including the Book of the Dead. The biggest issue I have with this is, I don't, uh, the reason I brought up Elias for that theory, Pamela was so fucking crazy. I don't buy she read from that book. You know what I mean? 
Mm -hmm. If someone is that mentally gone, that they're killing people on their son's birthday, are they really going to take the time to read from a book to resurrect their son when they're too, you know, too busy 86 in the people that are going to the goddamn campgrounds? Let me toss this around on you. Okay. She did read from it. That's what's sitting around the bin, and that's why she's killing people on her son's birthday. That I, don't all. You, I don't know if you've ever, uh, if you ever do any much role playing games uh, or know much about the Cthulhu mythos, but um, if you ever play a game called Call of Cthulhu, which is a role playing game based around the Cthulhu stories, as you play, your characters start losing, they have a sanity score, and it starts going down, and eventually you're either dead or insane. And to me, that's what reading from the Necronomicon would do, too. It would slowly drive you. If, and she obviously was already unhinged from the death of Jason. I haven't played Call of Cthulhu, but I'm currently playing The Sinking City. Okay. And it, ha- it has the same, it's the same thing, pretty much, as the same, as the same be beaver. And because you're a detective. And so, yeah, I I love what you just said, that it could be Pam. Maybe she was okay until she read from the book. I love that. I I love that. But they should have made it clear. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? More clear in this movie. If this is, look, they know this is Jason Goes to Hell. They know what this is. They're, I guess, ending it. Even though they're going to put his ass in space. Um, but <laughs> it, they should have done a better job with the overall storytelling is what I'm trying to say. Very weak, very weak, unfortunately. Um, I don't know if it was a case of too many chefs running the stew or what, but yeah. it's like, like, hey, I don't know. Maybe they didn't have access to the character of Pamela. Maybe, you know, I don't know how, what all they like, necessarily got and didn't get. So I don't know if they, you know, maybe My- they didn't the rights to her and couldn't refer to her I, I don't know my favorite character in this is duke mandy oh yes i love that but other than that it's like like really you you, you could have just made this a duke mandy movie and now what you know i would have cared jason and it's kind of a, a most dangerous game alive deal yeah, yeah. if it's maybe he's searching for jason to collect the bounty you know, he's a bounty hunter, you know, why not? That then there have you ever seen the Matt TV skit Jason Takes Apollo? Yes. Okay. This Jason or Jason X, you know, Jason in space, whatever you want to call it. This to me is the Mad TV skit come to life. It is, and I love it for it. It goes back to the um, you don't take this seriously. Right. Um, I remember, let's see, I think it was 2002 when that came out. I, I, I was uh, sharing a house with my cousin, and we didn't live that far from a mall. And I was I was off, and uh, it's like I've got to go see this. And I went to the theater in the mall, and I was literally the only person in the theater. So I, I'm watching this. I'm enjoying the heck out of it. Best kill is probably the liquid nitrogen kill, and he smashes her. But so many good things. Uh, again, it's Jason Voorhees in space. If you're trying to take that seriously, yeah, you, maybe you need to go see something else. <laughs> <laughs> again, you, you set with you get you some friends, you get some popcorn, you sit down, you sit back, and you enjoy. This this was the first Friday the 13th movie I saw in theaters, Jason X, because I wasn't old enough to see the rest of them and to see the rest of them in theaters. The first movie, the first horror movie I saw in theaters was Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not. I loved it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but so when I saw Jason X, I had seen the Mad TV skit. And so I'm going in there with my brother, and I'm like, I actually like how they look, made Uber Jason look in yes. this movie. Yes. I thought he looked good as Uber Jason. I wish they would have did that sooner in the movie. Um, I'd like to see more of Uber Jason. Right. Yeah. Again, it's it's not a movie you take seriously. I just remember laughing through most of it. 
<laughs> I remember my brother sort of burying his head <laughs> because he's like, this movie's awful. But it's awfully good. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, dude, it's Jason in space. You gotta laugh. What were you expecting, Jason, to stand there and go, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow? I mean, it's not Shakespeare. <laughs> there, there are certain films that it's like um, Cowboys versus Aliens, which is a film I've never seen, but I've seen the trailer and, and I know a little bit about it. I'm like, that's kind of I me. Mean, it's kind of like going seeing that film and going, this movie's nothing but cowboys and aliens. I didn't want to see that. But <laughs> it's Jason in space. Uh-huh. So uh, they remake they, Jason. They remake they, Jason. They, they sort they of take sort of, the first four films and combine them with the remake. Yeah. What did you think of this? Are we going? To, we're going to go back and talk about Freddy versus Jason, right? Yes, we are. We're okay. going back. All right, uh, remake. Um, normally, when someone that knows that I like Friday the Thirteenth talks about it, I will look at them dead serious and go, "There is no remake of Jason of Friday the Thirteenth. There is no remake. It does not exist, and never refer to it again." But welcome to the family, Derek Mears or Myers. I'm not sure how you say his name. Um, I've had some friends meet him at conventions, Derek Myers, and apparently, he's a super nice guy has nothing nothing but good stories about him. I wanted to like this. I, I really did. Um, let's see. I guess that would have been the second Platinum Dunes remake with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre being the first one, this being the second one, and um, Nightmare being the third. Um, I remember, uh, I guess I rented the Texas remake. No, I saw Texas. I remember it now. I saw it in the theater. Literally, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake is the only film I have ever went and actually asked for my money back. Wow. It's one of the worst films I had ever seen in my life. And I, I'm watching these, you know, this this is when I started to realize uh, my generation was, was passing. <laughs> it was no longer in, in, in an uh, ascension. All these, this younger generation, uh, the ones after me, I guess, they were just enthralled. They were terrified. And I'm like, I've seen scarier things looking in my toilet after I get up. (laughs) It was not the least bit scary. Um, It just... The biggest part of that was it it bleeds into the uh, Friday remake because they're both directed by a guy named Marcus Nespool, I believe his name is pronounced. And uh, I don't take vows lightly, but I have vowed to never watch a film this man directs ever again. I would wow. rather watch a Yui Bowl film, and I can't stand Yui Bowl. I just, I, the Texas remake was horrible. Like I said, I, I asked for my money back. Um, a friend of mine and his wife, they wanted to go see Friday the 13th. He knew I liked it. He said, come on, man, let's go. Let's go. Come on, go with us. And it's like, okay, even if, you know, sometimes you go on with friends, you have a better time. I was so bored in that film. Um, and I've never been bored. Uh, not as bored as long and as much as I was in the remake. Uh, you had Nana Visitor from uh, Star Trek Deep Space Nine doing the voice of Pamela Voorhees. I said she was in the film, but I didn't see her. You hear her voice. Like I said, he mentions uh, Jason just finds the film. And the whole bit about there being uh, uh, mine tunnels underneath Camp Crystal Lake. My first thought was, what kind of mine? Because right. everybody doesn't know like, uh, Crystal Lake is in New Jersey. Right. I'm sure they do mine things in New Jersey. I don't know what, but what kind of mine? Oh, we don't talk about that. It's just a mine. That's explaining how you run and, and he gets there before you. I know what they were doing. It's like, it's, it's like um, Superman. Right. You can do a realistic Batman movie where it's a rich guy who's muscular and smart and trained and all this, but the minute you have an alien show up who right. looks just like us, can fly, shoot lasers out of his eyes, and lift a battleship, you have to let reality escape a little bit. Yeah. Same thing, you know, like like I have said, you know, repeatedly over this, you don't take Friday the Thirteenth serious. You just sit back and have fun. And they were trying too hard to make it real and serious and. Uh, I, no, I, no. 
I think another thing with this movie is you've said about don't cast people who are so familiar or, you know, they got the guy from Supernatural to come yeah. do this movie. Yeah. You know, that's, and he's a good actor, don't get me wrong, but that's the thing. You know he's an actor. You know his face has been on TV a bunch of times. And I just felt they should, if they had just casted a bunch of nobodies and tried to build around them, and then did the killing like a whodunit maybe then okay we could have talked but the the way you do that and get away with it is with his tv brother i don't know which one's which but his tv brother that was in the remake of my bloody valentine yeah because to me the remake of my bloody valentine is a little little winky winky it's it's a film for for people like like me and you the the classic slasher fans if you've never seen the remake of my bloody valentine it's well worth it uh lots of gratuitous unnecessary blood and guts and, and 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 nakedness and i mean it's a real flashback i mean i don't want you to, i don't think it's gallons of blood flying at you but i've you seen know, it it but and it got especially if you've seen, at the very end when he looks at the camera and he kind of smiles. Okay. I could accept that. But like you said, with, with having the tall skinny brother in the Friday remake, oh, look, I'm watching a film. Yeah. Because they were trying to make it serious. Whereas to me, my Bloody Valentine remake was going, hey, let's have fun with this. Just sit back yeah. and we're going to you, entertain you for a couple of hours. And it did, with my Bloody Valentine, they had Tom Atkins in there too, which was great. <laughs> you cannot go wrong. No. No. I don't think Seth, that man's ever made a bad film. No. Okay, Freddy versus Jason. What were your thoughts? Well, uh, first of all, you, you have the wrong title. It's Friday the 13th, Part 11. Jason beats the shit out of Freddy. <laughs> uh, I enjoyed the heck out of this film. I, I really wish they had brought Kane Hodder back. I, I know why Ronnie Yu said he wanted, uh, I believe his name's Kurt, Kurt Kersner. He wanted yeah. somebody who's really tall to stand against, you know, uh, Robert England's like, I don't know, five, 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 six, five, seven. I'm not trying to cut inches off of himself. He sees this video. I- I'm sorry, Robert. I don't know how tall you are. But he wanted, you know, a mutton Jeff yeah. or tall and short, whatever you want to call it. Um, the, the Probably the only thing I really have about uh, Freddy versus Jason is this that Jason is somehow scared of the water. Yeah. I mean, we go back to six where he's literally in the water. No. He's walking through the water. No, he's not scared of it. Uh, they, you know, the, maybe even just some wording could have changed that around. But when, when you see little baby Jason under the water and he's crying and, and it's like, what the hell is this? But it's it's an interesting, entertaining film. Uh, we get to see two two big titans of slashers go at it. Um, it's it's amazing. I love it, and uh, I will state right here, right now, Jason wins it. And if you don't understand that Jason wins it, Jason walks out of the water with Freddy's severed head in his hand. Yes, Freddy's still alive because we hear him laugh, but he's a severed head. Jason went back to his shack, got a nail, shoved Freddy's head on it, and went to sleep or whatever it is that Jason does. Jason wins, hands down. But it's a fun film. I enjoyed the heck out of it. Uh, I wish we could have got more, but I enjoyed what we got. Yeah, I w- my biggest regret of this is we didn't get a sequel because it was it was that good. This movie was just it's pure fun from start to finish. You do not get bored at all with this. I'm with you on the water thing. I think I'll defend it a bit here. They're because Freddie's got the fire we uh, yeah, You wanted the balance. Yeah, they're they're sort of given it's sort of like a superhero super villain yeah. weakness. They're trying to they need to give Jason something and they know he drowned. It, does uh, it make I, I sense? Know, yeah, that's why I guess I kinda overlook it, but like when I, if I'm really watching it and I'm like Yeah, I'm with you though. There's a part of me going, shh, just watch it and enjoy it. <laughs> you heard it. Did you ever hear about the one of the proposed endings is they're, they're fighting. Uh, a hole opens up and they fall into the earth. They're still fighting. They end up somewhere and they're fighting. And then finally, like, 
part of the earth grabs them both and encases them like in columns and pinhead walks out and goes what seems to be the problem gentlemen and that was allegedly one of the endings that they wanted to do but again couldn't work it out wow that would have been a good ending yeah um, uh, the uh the the comic book series i mentioned freddy versus jason versus ash which actually has another sequel uh to that comic book series there's another comic book series which i don't have um <sighs> It's like everybody wants to tie into Ash and Evil Dead, but nobody ever does, really. It's like, that would have been great. Imagine, you know, and, and I don't know if you've ever read that comic book series, but Tommy Jarvis comes back. Wow. Um, um, I think Freddy's daughter comes back, and some of the surviving Nightmare Warriors come back. I mean, basically anybody that's still alive comes back, and, and Jace, or, or Ash helps Jack, Ash defeat them. And I forget... I want to say Ash ends up with the Necronomicon. But it's a fun, the art is kind of iffy, but it's a really interesting story. It's really fun. I really wish whoever put it out would collect it and make it more available. I know somebody had put together a real fun trailer of the DC superheroes like Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, going against Jason, Michael, Penhead, Freddy. And then Ash shows up in the trailer. <laughs> I don't. And whose don't, side is he on? He's on Ash's side. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if the trailer's still out there, but it, it's a fun trailer to watch for sure. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. It's fun. But <laughs> is there anything you want to add before we go? Oh, uh, I dug. I, I don't know if you noticed my shirt here, but. Yeah, I love that. Or it used to have these uh, Halloween shirts, is what I'd call them. Halloween meaning the holiday, not the film. Right. And this was the first one I got. Actually, my mom and my sister were like, don't you like this? I don't, I don't know how well you can see it. I can see it. It looks they great. They in a boat. And I just thought it was kind of dumb at first. I'm like, why is he standing in a boat? Well, then later after I buy it, I'm looking, wait a minute, there's a bat sticking out of the boat. There's somebody's hand. Nice. So the bat is through somebody's head, and he's just looking down at him. After that, I loved his shirt, and had, that to, is nice. had to cut the collar a little bit because my neck got too big. But <laughs> I, I, that's one of my favorite shirts. But it's not one you want to wear just anywhere. You have to think about where you're going to wear that because you'll see some people go, "Oh, okay," and then you see the ones when they realize and they're like, "Yeah, <laughs> oh my god." Listen, I'll wear a dark shadow shirts anywhere. I don't give a shit. It's like my wife's like, you know, we're going here. I'm like, I don't, I don't give. So, so, don't care. It's kind of like um, I used to have the uh, Rob Zombie, Lionel Richie remake of Brick House as my wife's ringtone. Yeah. Which at the beginning, if you've never heard it, it goes. It's like a woman moaning. It's a song. It's like, dun, 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 dun. You know, like the original Brick House. And you hear this woman very erotically and sexually moaning. And my wife's like, oh, that's my ringtone. Well, I'll make sure to call you the next time we're sitting in church. And I'm like, I better change that. <laughs> <laughs> so her, her ringtone got changed real quick. <laughs> I had, I had for like, when I received a message from uh what was it uh god we're in the comedy about the holy girl what's his message for you sir oh it, yeah it, that's what i had my brother's like what the fuck is that he was still alive i was like have you never seen this movie <laughs> at, at one of my previous jobs one of the it guys that was his uh i am notification so i'd be typing you know working whatever in the here Message for you, sir. <laughs> and I would always just kind of, you know, kind of laugh. And I'd look at him, and he'd look at me, and we'd, we'd share a little laugh and go on, you know. Oh god, that is funny, man. I liked it. I loved your Friday the Thirteenth shirt and your action figure. That is really, really cool, man. I'm so sad that um, during our last move, now I have the machete over. Here. I don't know if you can see it over here. I've got. Ash and the thing, and the, I think it's all the first series of the Marvel Maniacs, but the uh, the machete broke off. I still have the blade over there, 
Mm-hmm. I've tried to glue it back on, but it won't stay. But uh, when those came out, I, I'm not a super big fan of Todd McFarlane, but his company does make great action figures. And uh, my friend Paul that I mentioned that likes uh, Michael Myers, I gave him the Michael Myers. I'm like, you know, I'm this. this you, you need to have Michael. This this is the place he needs to be. So there, yeah. I like that. <laughs> Butch, man, I I want to thank you for taking the time to join me. I love the conversation, man. This was so so cool. Well, thank you, thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. Uh, anything, you know, anytime I can talk some horror with somebody knows what they're doing, uh, just, you know, just let me know. But I'm a big George Romero fan. I can tell you the story about the time I slept in a night, not uh, at a uh, rest stop to meeting. Nice, nice. We'll have to discuss Night of the Living Dead. We will have to set that up for right. sure. I will message you on Facebook to see see when you're available for that, and we will set that up. But th- he's Butch Rosenbaum. I'm Joel Saints. Thank you guys, and Butch, thank you again, man. Thank you, Joel. I appreciate it. Yep. Bye. Goodbye.